My name is Irvin Birnbaum. I am now 89 plus years old. I lived through the Shoah, the Holocaust. And I want you to know that because of the story that you will hear, I learned to appreciate life and I take every day as a present, as a gift. My name is Irvin Birnbaum, and this is my story. My garden of Eden was in a little town where my grandparents lived, Lipani in Slovakia. Early in the morning, I woke up to the chirping of birds before going with my grandfather to the synagogue. I loved listening to the birds there. It was beautiful. And to this day, when I hear birds chirping in my home, I think back of those youthful days that were really my Garden of Eden.
saw that the deportation of the Jews is taking place. My brother Mickey and I were alone at home. We went to our grandparents who lived next door. What do you say to your grandparents when you know that you are saying the last goodbye? So before we had a chance to open our mouth, my grandfather stood up, came over to me, embraced me, and said in Yiddish, Ich will leben, mein Kind. I want to live, my child. But now, now just geishoin, geishoin. Now go already, go already. So Mickey and I took off our uh, yellow star that was very significant. And we struck out nonchalantly. Headed to our hiding place. Here you are, a 14, 15 year old youngster. Mickey was altogether three years older. And we are headed for a place that was on the other side of town, our hiding place, the theater Tivoli. We were in the attic. about two weeks, 12 people, 13 people. A woman took care of us by the name of Lebanovich. One day the woman came up and she brought a letter which said that uh, we know that there are Jews hiding in the uh, building. If you will not deposit 50,000 penge, a large sum of money in those days. Then we will hand you over to the Gestapo.
young people decide they will not take a chance. It's Shloimi, Mickey and I decided we are going to leave that evening and we'll go by train to Budapest. But Shloimi said, I can't use a set of false papers. I look so Jewish. Look at my Jewish nose. They will all see that I am a Jew. But no, he didn't want to stay there. So we went to the uh, train station together. We were just about one hour away from Budapest, a place called Hatwan. The police entered. They asked for his papers and they told him you will come off with us. I remember his eyes, he was full of despair. Because he knew that's his end. And it was his end. I worked in Budapest half a year, approximately, by which time the Hungarian Nazi government took over and things became very dangerous for Jews. I began looking for a job outside of Budapest. My papers show that I'm 17 years old, but in fact I was 15. Developments were such that you had to be a thousand years old rather than 15 years old if you wanted to survive. So uh, I became a farm supervisor. Every morning at 4.30 I had to be at uh, a barn. Then I went out to, to the fields to supervise the workers, cutting the wheat and the barley. I didn't even know the difference between wheat and barley, but I... <laughs> So of course, I didn't tell that to anybody. And everything was all right, until one day I went too far and I was out too long. The wife of the owner says, uh, you, you look very red, you seem to have temperature. She said, I'm going to call a doctor. I didn't want a doctor because in those days, only Jews were circumcised. 
they get a doctor and the doctor will see that I have a circumcision and that's uh, my end. But during the night I felt my temperature increasing. So I crawled out the window. And from that point on I don't remember anything. But I just know that somehow I covered the distance of five kilometer walk to the railroad station. I somehow got onto a train. I somehow got into Budapest. I somehow got through the uh, very strict control at the railroad station. And I somehow got to my father's apartment. But don't ask me how. I woke up at my father's apartment about three days later. I was in a terrible state. But I got over it and I emerged from it. Thank God. Terrible state. I was liberated by the Russian army on January 18th, 1945. That day I didn't know anything. I didn't know how many Jews were killed. It took a few days and maybe a few weeks until we learned that we are talking about a number which is one-third of the Jewish people, globally. Six billion were killed, were destroyed.
So where was God? I come from a very religious home, but when it was over, I became a total atheist. I couldn't believe in God. Thank you. 